Yes, are we good to continue? Please confirm. Okay, good. So now we are starting with a new topic, my dear friends. We are starting with a very, very new topic. Okay, and that new topic is what? It's called testing, especially unit testing. So you need to understand uh, the following with respect to testing, my dear friends. So all with me, this is something new, extremely important, very, very critical for any real life enterprise application. Right, very important. So you see this now, I'm going to do what, you know, I am, uh, I, I, I will keep this as it is and I better start with, with, uh, with a different, very good. I will start with a different uh, .io, create new, and I'll say PWC training whiteboard. What is the name that I had given? So download application documents PWC training. Uh, right. But this will be week two whiteboard two. Okay. So I will save this also as two. Correct. So I'm starting with testing. Come on, friends. Please, please take a look at this. This is this is very, this this is going to be very very interesting. So when you write your application, my dear friends, any business application that you build, any application that you build. Your application needs to be tested, isn't it? Your application needs to be tested. And if you do not test your application and if you deploy, you can imagine what will happen, isn't it? That's really bad. Okay. Perfect, right. So any business application that you build needs to be tested. And now where are they? there are various different types of testing. You have something called functional testing. Okay. You have something called system testing. There are various different types of testing. Various different types, system testing. Write the overall testing of the system. Here the functionality of the system. And system testing is a very general and the umbrella term used. So I will not use that. I'll be very specific. Functional testing. Then there is something called load testing. Then there is something called performance testing. Okay, performance testing. And so on. What are these different types of testing? Functional testing. You test the functionality of your application. Then there is something called UI testing as well wherein you just simply focus on testing the user interface, whether it is in line with the expectations or not. Functional testing is all about testing whether the functionality works or not. If you were supposed to create a new invoice and you fill up the form and you click on submit, does invoice really get created or not? And all the business logic that was, that was supposed to be implemented, the software works exactly as per the business. So this functional testing is actually business, you know, I mean, so functional testing is checking whether the business it or it provides the required business behavior or not business behavior okay that's what the functionality is focused towards right and then the load testing part of it so i'll just take this here and i'll take this down load testing what is load testing when once you deploy your application how much of load it can take can there be thousand concurrent users ten thousand concurrent users that's what load testing is something like an uber app don't you think load testing will be extremely important how many concurrent users are supported by the application that's very important so load testing then you have performance testing as well so for example in in how much time you can book a cab so you put you do all you you put all the details of you know booking a cab in the moment you click on submit how soon you get a response back saying that your uh, cab is booked or your request is declined. We do not have a cab available. How much time does it take? That is called performance testing. Correct? Yes, many users to get. Yeah, correct. So that's how it is. So that's how it is, you know. All of these are the different types of 
testing. All of these are, what's wrong with this? Yeah, all right. So all of these are the different types of testing. But you know what, what one important thing is, who's going to perform all of this testing? So for UI testing, you will have some specific set of professionals who will be performing the testing. For the functional testing also, there are some set of people who will do this functional testing QA, right? Those are known as QA professionals. And they are very, very highly paid, very important field. You know, many people think that QA or quality assurance or testing is a low level job. No, 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 not at all. It's a very high fine job. That's a very interesting, yeah, QA, quality analysis. You call them as QA professionals, you know, quality analysis professionals, correct? Then again, you have some, you know, specific set of professionals that will do load testing and performance testing as well. So all of this testing is done when you have put your application in a QA environment. And let's know this very carefully. When you have put your application in a QA environment, so your application goes through different stages. First of all, it is in the dev stage. It is in the dev stage, correct? And then it moves to, it moves to the QA stage. And then after that, it moves to staging, which is optional staging. Okay, optional. This is optional in the sense, if you can afford, fine, but otherwise, you know, this requires good amount of resources. So staging, here also you need good amount of resources, but you cannot avoid this. I mean, this is not, you cannot avoid it, but this can be avoided. Not avoided, I can say this can be dropped. You know, it all depends on how deep your pockets are. And then, of course, there is something called production. What do you mean by production? Software going in production, what does that mean really? Tell me. What does that really mean? What does this mean? Software going in production means what? Correct. This is all it is. What do you mean by software going in production? It is started use being used by yes, correct. Use you yes, correct, correct. So people have started using the software. People have started actually using the software in order to run your run their business or run their affairs. They have started using your software, they have started using your app. That's how it is. So there are different stages, but so that's the production stage. But what is the dev stage? Dev stage is the stage wherein you know you are still developing the application. And when you develop your application, my dear friends, I have a question to you all. Will there be one single member in the team or there will be several members in the team? When you, you, you are developing your application, there will be several members in the team, isn't it? Correct. You will have, uh, you know, one member in the team. You have another member in the team. All of these people, all of these people, right? Suppose you have got a four member team. Suppose you have a four member team. All of these four people are writing code. In which stage? They are all writing code. In which stage they are writing code? Dev. Yes, correct. So when they are writing code, they are in horrible. They are writing code in what stage? They are in the dev stage. Correct? They're all writing code in the dev stage. Let me put this in a box like this. Right. I'll group this up. Now this becomes easy. So all of these people are working on the dev stage. Let me change the arrows around. Okay. They are all working here in the dev stage. So this guy, do you think all of them will be working on the same set of files, same set of features? Or your manager will assign different, different features. Like, you know, you develop this and then you develop this and then you develop this and then you develop this. So it's a huge software that needs to be developed or maybe a software of a reasonable size, if not huge. Yeah, different, different features. So suppose this developer one is working on one feature. Okay, D1 is the developer one. 
correct he is developer 2 correct ungroup and he is developer 2 this guy is developer 3 and this guy is developer 4 right i have named them in clockwise format so these are the ones who are the developers now i'll group them up now this d1 guy is going to commit and push his code once he has finished with his work don't you think D4 will also do the same thing and D3 and D2 will also follow suit? Don't you think they will also be committing their code? Come on, yes or no? They will be committing and pushing their code to the server. Where is the server? Bitbucket. If not Bitbucket, then uh, AWS code commit. There are many, many such servers. You know, the, these, these platforms are available out there in the market wherein you can have your source code managed on the cloud. I repeat, you can have your source code managed in the cloud. You can very well do that. You can very well do that. Correct. So when they are pushing their code, what happens? Do you think each one of them must be pushing their code without testing their own code? Whatever code I am writing must work well on my machine. Yes or no? Come on, yes or no? It must work well on my own machine. Correct. And this guy has written his own code and that must run very well in his own environment, in his on his own local machine. Isn't it? You got that? And then similarly, D3 and D2 also, these guys are going to write their code, which must run on their own local machines. So the piece of code that this D1 has written I will call that as the unit of code written by D1. And then you will have unit of code written by D4. Then I will say the unit of code, that means the piece of code. It can be two classes, they can be three classes, maybe 10 classes he ends up writing. This D2 guy ends up writing his own set of classes. A simple example, a simple example. Suppose Rakesh is given the task to build the services for customer. For customer and monisha is given the responsibility of implementing the services for product so monisha ends up writing the product controller the product service and the product uh, you know the service and then so on correct write up the product repository whereas rakesh will end up writing what customer controller customer service and customer do and customer repository these are different set of classes am i right so this is maybe four classes, maybe five classes, maybe whatever the number of classes are. Each and every member in the team will end up writing his own unit, his own piece of code. As I said, maybe one class, maybe 10 classes. But all of those 10 classes becomes his unit for that particular feature. Don't you think that person must, Manisha must test her code and Rakesh must test his code before he pushes the code to the server? Yes or no? You all agree that they must test their code well. You agree? Correct. Okay. And how do you think they must test the code? After writing the code, they must go to Chrome and then they must, you know, invoke the URL from here. And once the URL is invoked, then they will, you know, get the values. Right. And then they see whether the value is really correct or not. Right. When I say local OS 8081 and I say products, wow, my code is working. I'm getting the data here. Brilliant. And I'm happy I'm getting the data here. Once I get refresh. Wow, very good. If something goes wrong, I make changes and then again check. Is this the is this a good way of testing? Achha, is it testing ho jayega ki nahi ho jayega? Tell me in the very first place. Will this still help you to test or not? This 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 way or this mechanism or this technique will still help you to no no testing ho jayega na lekita. So see, you're firing the URL and you're checking whether you're getting the data on the console or not. You're seeing whether the data is getting. Ah, but this is manual testing. Is this good? No, this is not good. This is bad. Why is this bad? Come to who then why it is bad? I think uh, someone, I think Abhijit is not on mute mode. All of help is go on mute mode. 
I can hear my hear my own feedback. Right. Okay, thank you. So please see, testing the whole jaga, right? I mean, you end up doing the testing work, but then this is not good. Why is this not good? Now this is a million dollar point. Why is this not good? And this is not the way. This is a million dollar point, my dear friends. Please understand this very nicely. Don't miss this. There is a test. Test hone wala hai. Okay. So, so you must know why is this not good. This is not good because because eventually all the code that these people have written will go on to Bitbucket in the same repository. In the same repository, I repeat, in the same repository, in the same source code repository. So my code gets merged with your code, right? And then the third person's code, and the fourth member of the team, four or five of us, we are all writing our in, writing our own individual units as per you know whatever feature was assigned to us. We implement that, and it goes on to the same source code, and that same source code will be deployed on this development server. I repeat, we are in the development stage, but the source code that all of these people are writing will go on to the dev server. Repeat, what server? Come on, friends, please repeat, what server? It will go to the dev server, right? This dev server. And don't you think it is important to test when it goes to the dev server? Don't you think it is important to test that when my code merges with your code, or in other words, when my code integrates with your code, after that integration, also the code that you have written and I have written works fine. Otherwise, it so happens that I have written some code, and when I merge it with your code, things go haywire. Possible or not? Come on, possible. Correct? Yes. So what kind of testing needs to be done here when I when when the code is deployed when the code is deployed to the development server. So actually this is not how it is. I'm sorry. This is not how it is. Try and understand this point. This is very interesting. There is a repository. Okay. Bitbucket repository. I'm using again and again Bitbucket, but it can be any any other service provider. It can be Bitbucket. It can be Bitbucket is from Atlassian, but it can be any other AWS or Azure or whatever. Every one of these big names in the industry, they provide uh, source code management systems on the cloud. So suppose a Bitbucket, we are talking about Bitbucket. So this Bitbucket contains what? It contains the source code repository. Source code repo. Okay. See? Source code repo. So where these guys, each one of these guys are going to push their code here. See, what am I writing here? P-U-S-H. They're going to push their code here. And how do you think this code will be deployed on the development server? I repeat, how will I be deploying the code on the development server? I will have some person in the team given the responsibility that you see when all of these guys, you know, they put the code on Bitbucket, you just simply go ahead and deploy it on your dev server. You know, you just simply go ahead and deploy it on your dev server. Uh, so that guy will go here, he will generate the jar file or the war file, the web archive file, and then he is going to use SSH, he's going to deploy it on the server, and then he's going to run the application here on the server and he's going to test it. Is that the way you think things work? You think that's the way? No. We write another program. Hello, friends. We write another program, and those program runs on Jenkins. This is called CI/CD, Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment Platform. So the CI/CD pulls the code from here. See this? Pulls the code from here and it is this jenkins that automatically so everything is automated it deploys the code here this is how the deployment happens this is how the deployment happens you're getting the point so developers will push the code to what bit bucket that you have been doing now we have been doing that since so many days but jenkins is a software where i will write a batch process repeat what will i write i will write a job I will write a script. I repeat, I am going to write a script. And when I write that script, what is that script supposed to do? That script will su is supposed to pick up the code from here and it is going to deploy that code here. Come on. 
So this is happening automatically. Yes, sir. The deployment happens automatically. All, all are clear on this point. The deployment is happening. How? How is the deployment happening? Come on. How is the deployment happening? Is it manual deployment or automatic deployment? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Is it manual deployment or automatic? Automatic. So who is going to now test the code here? Come on, my I have a problem here. So this is there is no manual person. I mean, there is no person. There is no there is no person sitting over here who is going to do the deployment. Ye banda deploy karega. So I mean, this software is going to deploy. How will the software ensure that the code that is pushed by everyone compiles successfully? Compiles successfully, and each one of the units that is pushed by D1, D2, D3, D4 performs rather behaves exactly the way it was expected to behave. Contest karega. Now, is it possible? Dekho, yaha to, you know, when you are an individual programmer yourself, and when you are implementing, no, not functional testing. Functional testing karna hoga to then that's a different story. I'll come to that later. See, understand my point. Good, you all are participating very well. Try and understand. Try and understand. This guy over here, when he writes his code, maybe he does testing like this, you know. Maybe he does testing like this. And he executes the URL and then he comes back to his console and he sees, theek hai, chala. but then yaha pe, over here, there is no person sitting, right? So how will people ensure or how will your stakeholders ensure that the code written by each one of them, when it is integrated, right? When it is pushed to the Bitbucket source code management system and when it is pulled and when it is deployed on the development server, everything still works fantastic. That means the code that he had written works here. The code that he has written works here. The code that he, this guy has written also works here. And then the code that this guy has written also works here. How do you think will that be ensured? It will not be possible for some person to sit here and after the deployment happens or while the deployment is happening, check whether the deployment failed, whether the compilation failed, whether, you know, the the code was per, the code was uh, you know implemented appropriately providing the behavior that was expected all that for the all that you don't have a person sitting here i need everything automated so what do you do each and every person now this is the crux of the matter friends this is the crux of the matter each and every developer i repeat each and every developer when he writes his code the moment he completes writing his code i repeat the moment he or she completes writing the code before that person pushes the code that person will first write a unit test case a test case which is again a program I repeat, unit test case, it is again a program that tests another program. All of friends are getting it. Correct. We will write a program that will test another program. And such a program that tests my own unit, my own piece of code is known as is known as unit test code it's known as unit test cases i hope you are getting the point friends it's known as what unit test cases so the code that i have written so far see see the way we have proceeded further and in order to close the loop whatever goes on the dev server if it is just perfect and everything gets deployed over here that me uh, successfully that means integration testing is successful. Now, what does this mean? So when I write my unit test cases, I will test it not only on my local machine, but those unit test cases will also get pushed to my bit bucket. Come on, yes or no? So this guy's code I, along with its test cases will get pushed over here. What is a test case? Yet another program, we are going to write that program. We are going to see that in action. So I write another program which will test my own program. So D4 guy has also written his test cases. This guy, this guy, and this guy. Now you know what happens when they push the code here and when Jenkins pulls the code, Jenkins will compile the code first and second. Jenkins will compile the code first and second, what will it do? 
it will run all the unit test cases it will run the unit test cases of this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy in short it will run all the unit test cases in that particular application if any one of those unit test cases fail it will not deploy it to the development server is this point clear is this point clear jenkins will execute so here you will execute your own test case before you push it to the server i repeat you will you 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 will execute your own test cases before you push it to the server so you are, you are clear that everything is perfect this guy is clear that everything is perfect this guy is clear everything is perfect this guy is clear that everything is perfect a million dollar point none of this guy still knows that when his or her code is merged with the other person's code then also after merging also whether things will work well or not neither this does this guy know this guy this guy know no one of these guys know till the time jenkins does not pick up the code which is pushed by all and compiles the code and runs the unit test cases and then does the deployment but it will do the deployment only and only it is optional only if all test cases pass you getting the point only if all the test cases so the test, test cases written by this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy right all of those test cases will be executed by jenkins if all the test cases pass the deployment happens to the server you're getting the point the deployment happens to happens on that server and once the deployment happens on this server then you know it does a promotion then this jenkins if this is this is perfect now here you will have another server called qa server so jenkins will now deploy it to the qa server and there will be now qa professionals so these were developers but now you will have qa professionals okay you will have qa professionals so these qa professionals will test the application which is deployed see this is the server on which the deployment has happened qa server qa person one qa person two and qa person three a person three all of these guys are qa guys right all of these are who who are these like they are you see this sent to back okay select them all i'll group them all these are qa professionals are qa professionals worried about your source code are they worried about the source code no they are worried about the functionality that you have deployed and these are the developers correct these are the developers see these are the developers correct these developers are supposed to write code and these developers are supposed to write unit test code and then yes so one level of testing has already happened here and another level of functional behavior will be checked over here that everything really works as per expectations or not correct as per expectations or not everything is working or not that's what is tested correct so see these are qa professionals this is how once qa professionals give a green light that yes all the features that were implemented by these four programmers everything is working fine they will do they will do ui testing they will do functional testing everything else and then after that the code will be deployed either on the staging server or else it will be deployed on what it will be deployed on the production server so finally if everything is okay it goes to the production server correct that's how it is but now there are lot loads of other things as well that needs to be discussed how you know what is the strategy to uh, you know create branches which branch will go to the production server which will remain in the qa server which will go to the dev server and stuff and all all that will be discussed we will discuss when we discuss devops but this is how things really work right this is how things really work this is interesting isn't it friends this is very interesting very very interesting and the guys who sets up all of these things the guy who sets up all of all of this this guy you know the one who sets up all of this is known as what guy what is his known what is he known as devops the one who manages this entire environment okay 
this guy is known as what? He manages the environment. He manages this. He manages this. He manages this. 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 He is known as a DevOps engineer. Got it. This is about a DevOps. You got that. This QA professional, of course, is not the part of the DevOps. I'm sorry about that. So let me move this guy out. Right? So that there is no confusion at all. This is how it is. This is how it is. It's very interesting. It's fun. All right? It's fun. So, <laughs> so what is it that we are going to learn now? You tell me. What is it that we're going to learn? What is it that we're going to learn? How to write? Come on, how to write? Unit test cases. Correct. That's what we're going to learn. How to write test cases. So what's the time now? It's 11.42 already. Let's take a short break here, friends. Come on, let's take a short break. 15 minutes tea break. We are going to come back and continue and we are going to get started with test cases. Right, friends? All set? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. 15 minutes tea break. So the time is uh, 42. Uh, we, will be, we will be back at 12. Okay, 12. At 12 p.m. Okay.